Coming up, we're sewing together this super simple tote bag that can probably fit your entire life inside. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen, and this channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable for everyone. And I'm really excited about today's project because even though it is very beginner friendly, it has a really big impact. So this is all part of our Learn to Sew series. And if you haven't checked out some of the earlier videos, I would highly recommend you do so, especially if you're very new to sewing and you don't yet know how to use a sewing machine. So this is called the Super Simple Tote Bag. The finished size is about 19 and a half by 15 inches. It is a very oversized tote bag. It is lined, it has a middle divider pocket so you can separate some of your stuff. I love the way it turned out. It's very easy and I ended up making this, if you're not filming this, you can probably make this in one day. So let's get right to it. All right, here's what you need in terms of materials. There's a supply list down in the info box. I'm using six ounce weight canvas, main panels in a print 21 by 15 and a half inches. This is Cotton and Steel Rifle Paper Co. English Garden and Navy. Solid strips for the outside top accent of the bag, 21 by four and a half inches. Solid lining pieces, 21 by 19 inches. One solid piece for the inside divider pocket, 21 by 13 and a half inches. Double fold bias tape is to cover the raw edge of the pocket. You can use whatever width you'd like. Two yards of one inch cotton webbing, Fusible woven interfacing for the exterior pieces cut slightly smaller. This is Pellon Shape Flex 101. First, I fuse the interfacing to each piece with the textured glue side down. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Although I'll admit, I kind of did a shortcut by spraying water onto the pieces and laying a heat press over top on both sides. Things are really getting steamy up in here. Cut the cotton webbing so you end up with two one yard pieces for each handle. On the long top side of the main printed panel, measure and mark lines five and a half inches in from each end with a disappearing pen. Line up each side of the handle right on the markings. Be sure the piece isn't twisted. It should be oriented the way you want on the finished bag. It's somewhat helpful to secure in place with a wonder clip or two. I'm using a narrow zigzag stitch to tack down the handles. Here are my sewing machine settings. Start stitching a little before and after the handle with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Doing this will ensure the handles stay in the spot you want them while you sew the main and accent top pieces. Place the top piece over the main piece, right sides together. Secure with pins. These extra fine magic pins are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop along with other sewing supplies. Use a half inch seam allowance to sew the pieces. Backstitch at the beginning and end. Remove the pins as you sew. I personally don't like to sew over them. I've broken a few needles that way. Whenever I sew any seam, I press to set in the stitches, then open and press the seam facing down. Mark another line five and a half inches in on the top piece for handle placement later. Top stitch about a quarter inch down from the seam. I used Aurifil 12 weight thread, so it stands out more with a 100 over 16 needle and a 3.5 stitch length. Let's break out the bias tape. This is what I use to cover the raw edge of the pocket. I cut the tape slightly longer than what I need for the long side, then ran a generous amount of Elmer's washable school glue inside the fold. To distribute on both sides, I finger pressed the tape together, then unfold it again and sandwiched the pocket piece inside the tape. Going back to standard thread, edge stitch the tape with about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Okay, now we'll start actually constructing the tote bag. Instead of pins, I glue basted the pocket to one lining piece with that same Elmer's washable school glue. Then place the second lining piece on top with the pocket in the middle. Here I am going to secure with pins because the canvas layers are getting pretty thick. Pin the two sides and the bottom. You will need to leave a section open at the bottom of the lining for turning, about six to seven inches in the center. Once again, my sewing machine settings. For extra reinforcement, I constructed the bag with the triple stitch, which is number two. The machine sews each stitch three times. This one is good for heavier fabric and seems subject to a lot of wear and tear. Except for that opening, sew the two sides and bottom. Thank you. 
It helps to press both sides of the opening to produce a crisp fold that will be stitched up later. Repeat the pinning and sewing process for the exterior pieces, except you do not need the opening, so stitch the sides and bottom in one continuous line. Now we're going to create a bar tag on each side of the pocket to reinforce those areas. Remove the front piece on the sewing machine to fit the lining over the free arm. Right next to the side seam, sew about a half inch forward and back with a narrow zigzag stitch. Press the seams open on all sides of the lining and main parts. To make the boxed corners, pinch them together. Here's my tip for matching up seam lines. Insert a pin right through the center and align it so it emerges in the center on the other side. Pierce the center closer to the tip, which should hold the placement until it's sewn down. Here's where a small, clear, square quilting ruler comes in. Measure out 2 inches from the point into the seam line, and eyeball the markings on either side to ensure they are even from the middle. Mark a line with disappearing ink or tailor's chalk. I'll also add more pins to reinforce the corner before sewing. Repeat these steps for all four corners on the outer and lining fabrics. Stitch directly on this line at the sewing machine using the triple stitch. Trim off the excess at the corners, leaving about a half inch seam allowance. Turn the outside of the bag exterior right side out. Put it inside the lining with the right sides together. What I usually do is line up the side seams and pin on either side. Then pull taut from the sides and pin the middle on out. Canvas does have the tendency to fray, so now's a good time to trim all those stray pieces sticking out. I find pinning every few inches to be sufficient. With the half inch seam allowance and still using that triple stitch, sew around the entire top of the bag. When you get back to the beginning, overlap the stitches about an inch to lock them in place. Here's what it should look like now. Time to turn the bag right side out through the opening in the lining. Gently reach in and pull out the exterior so the whole bag is now right side out. Press the top seam of the bag. Tip, glue base to the lining's opening because we're about to close it for good. Triple stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, back stitching at the beginning and end. I'm using matching 40 weight cotton thread. Push the lining into the exterior of the bag and press the top seam as best you can. Back at the sewing machine, top stitch the top seam about a quarter inch away from the edge with a triple stitch. Overlap the stitches when you get back to the starting point. We're getting close to the end, I promise. Last, I needed to reinforce the handles with stitching and to keep them from flopping all over the place. With a clear quilting ruler, I drew a rectangle and an X on the portion that's on top of the top accent piece. Be sure to use disappearing ink again. Triple stitch directly on the marked lines at the sewing machine. Due to the color difference in the handle and lining, I used green upper thread and pink bobbin thread so it blends into those elements.
I'm debating whether I should keep this bag for myself or if I should gift it to someone. Not really sure yet. Let me know down below in the comments which one I should do. And if you'd like to make this bag, you can also experiment a little bit, try it out in different sizes. I usually, when I'm trying to come up with a bag size, I will kind of sketch it out on a piece of paper just to get a general idea and try to come up with the measurements. But this was a really fun one. I hope you did enjoy this video and be sure to check out more videos in the Learn to Sew series because I have a lot of other beginner friendly sewing and quilting projects. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.